Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. All right, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna cover the economy and maybe a little bit of eugenics. Germany told Cyprus they could tax their depositors or leave the Eurozone. This is the biggest story right now financially is Cyprus. The drama out of Cyprus Saturday continues to get more interesting. They've been ailing for quite some time now and everybody knew that a bailout was coming. It's interesting, too, because I've, I've heard these stories building up to this about how it was Western democratization against uh, Russian, uh, basically Russian cronyism. So you had a lot, of, a lot of Russian influence in this as well that was uh, helping them out, the, the last bailouts. And, of course, Israel, that uh, Israel wants to get in there, too, as far as uh, natural gas reserves. And I think they even have, the UK SAS has uh, intelligence there as well. So, But the big surprise is that depositors and banks will be subject to an instant one-off tax to raise nearly 6 billion euros. So they got to pay for the bailout. It says here the background is that because Cyprus has an enormous banking system and houses a lot of offshore Russian money, there was not much political appetite to bail it out, even though the amount of cash was minimal. In fact, it seems Germany was comfortable letting Cyprus go completely out of the, what, the EU, but it says here, this uh, crack economy, economics reporter at the UK says that uh, Germany basically gave them a, a quid pro quo deal, which is take the deal or leave the eurozone. Then we have government takes up to 10% of individuals' funds on deposit with banks as part of a bailout agreement. People in Cyprus have reacted with a shock to the news of a one-off levy of up to 10% on savings as part of a 10 billion euro bailout agreed in Brussels. Savers could be seen queuing at qua uh, cash machines amid resentment at the charge. It says the deal reached with Euro partners and the IMF marks a radical departure from previous international aid packages. That's right, the banks are actually going to go in there and take people's savings. So it's a first. That's could be setting a precedent, and that's why they're doing it here. The president, which is probably the puppet president, defended it as a painful step taken to avoid disorderly bankruptcy. People in Cyprus with less than 100,000 euros in their accounts will have to pay a one-time tax of 6.75%. Those with greater sums will lose 9.9%. It says here that depositors could access all of their money except the amount set by levy. Cyprus put forward this new plan. There's another article. You can go in there and check it out. Germany and IMS initial deposit haircut demand 40% of total. So, this, yeah, the president says we should all take responsibility in this historic decision to rescue the economy. So, and he goes on and he says that, you know, we should have all seen this coming. Let's not blame anybody and play the blame game. Let's just get it done. You hear that same rhetoric coming out of the EU, the Eurozone, and the U.S. as far as bailouts and um, stimulus packages or quantitative easing. Talking about people that over, what, $1,000 or what was the number that we were looking at? Yeah, 100,000. It says here that uh, people with over the 100,000 euros would be led to a vicious cycle of asset liquidation, and these depositors would suffer losses over 60%. So it goes on here and says it would push the whole banking system into collapse. Uh, a lot of businesses, especially smaller businesses, would go into bankruptcy. In addition, the national weakening of Cyprus would lead to the devaluation of the currency by at least 40%. The rape of Cyprus by the European Union and the IMF. So it says here, I've been watching the articles pour out from Cyprus all weekend. It says, aggravated with the majority of them as I am with what took place. People are dancing around the edges while the propaganda machines of Europe are turning out the usual bunk. Let's get some things straight and says, look what has happened directly in the face. There was no tax in the bank accounts in Cyprus. There still is no tax. The parliament has not passed it and will not vote on it until tomorrow. And of course, today they actually uh, pushed it back another day. So whatever takes place is retroactive. It says that it was not enacted by Cyprus. The people uh, did not go to the summit and ask for the bank accounts in their country to be minimized to help pay the bills. Far from it, the nations of Germany, Europe, France, the Netherlands, and the rest demanded that this take place. The European Union has confiscated the private property of the citizens of Cyprus without debate, legislation, or parliamentary agreement. A bank account is not a bond or a stock or any sort of investment. This seems to be lost on many people. It's the private property of a citizen or corporation. It does not belong to the government, or at least that was the supposition until now. Next, 
It says here, until yesterday, all depositors in uh, Cyprus banks were insured up to the value of 100,000 euros with any one bank, but it says nothing now, nothing is safe. The European Union and European Central Bank and IMF have just advocated the confiscation of private property for their own indulgence. A little quote by John Adams that Zero Hedge leaves you with, the moment the idea is admitted into society that property is not as sacred as the law of God and that there is not a force of law and public justice to protect it, anarchy, tyranny, commence. So, you know, I don't completely believe or agree with that statement, but for whatever it's worth, bulldozer parks outside a Cyprus bank. Logical question comes next, why is there a massive bulldozer parked outside a just bailed out bank? Well, if up to 9.9% .9 of your money was suddenly without warning stolen by your bank, or as they say, reinvested, and the rest of it was completely inaccessible, you would too probably park your bulldozer in front of said bank. Russia sending permanent warship fleet to the Mediterranean, it says there's a Russian naval base in Cyprus coming next. So they made uh, many um, promises or threats, including the a different ports that they were going to create. But it says here they may not have, they may have not only a geopolitical target, namely the now pseudo-insolvent Russian protectorate of Cyprus, but a perfect alibi to be in the region as well, and to have a plan B to the Syrian port of Tartus, which is Russia's only naval base in the region. After the banks are steal money from bank accounts in Cyprus, they will start doing it everywhere else. They're saying that Cyprus is a beta test, they're trying to commit bank robbery in broad daylight, and they're eager to see if the rest of the world will let it, them get away with it. One writer for Forbes has called this probably the single most inexplicably irresponsible decision in banking supervision in the advanced world since the 1930s. Lastly, the bank runs that we witnessed in Cyprus over the weekend may just be a preview of what's coming. When this, uh, when this wealth tax was announced, it triggered a run on the ATMs, and many of them ran out of cash very rapidly. Bank holiday was declared for Monday, and all electronic transfers on Monday were banned. Again, I just saw in the news that uh, this uh, decision or vote was put off another day. So it means that they may actually be getting a lot of resistance, and they're trying to uh, force this to be stopped. And, of course, dark forces are probably pushing behind the scenes to get this thing passed. Euro plummets in Asia markets as... Cyprus plans to levy bank deposits. The euro has plummeted in Asia markets amid worries about plans by Cyprus to impose a levy on its bank deposits. So it says here that uh, Lars Seer Christensen, CEO of Saxo Bank, originally posted this at his blog at tradingfloor.com saying that this is full-blown socialism and I still can't believe it happened. He says, but maybe the European Union is no longer a civilized democracy. He heard rumors last week about uh, but dismissed them as completely outlandish it says in here the consequences are unpredictable we can clearly look are we looking at a significant paradigm shift this is a breach of fundamental property rights dictated to a small country by foreign powers and it must make every bank depositor in Europe shiver that if you can do this once you can do it again and depositors in other prospective bailout countries must be running scared is it safe to keep money in Italian Spanish or Greek banks anymore the market reaction is it's good for gold and, and for safe haven countries like Switzerland and Singapore. Unemployment rate rises in half of U.S. states, says the Labor Department. The rate has increased in half or by half of U.S. states, with employers adding the fewest jobs in seven months. British workers suffer sharpest fall in wages. We actually covered this Friday, but it's pretty posted as uh, today. British workers suffer the sharpest fall in wages as compared with any other developed country. So they've been witnessing a wage fall faster than any other workforce in developed nations. It's leaving workers with smaller incomes at a time of rising costs for basic necessities such as food, fuel, gas, and electricity, not to mention housing costs. One million Brits dead in winter scandal. Oh, it's a scandal. Is it an operation maybe, a population reduction operation? Winter weather has killed millions of Brits since the 1980s and will kill a million more by 2050. 2050, experts have warned. Age support groups and doctors blame poor housing, high energy bills, and pensioner poverty. Many killed by the cold are elderly, but the ill, vulnerable, and very young also die, which are the target, the young, uh, the young and the old, because they don't have much use for this brave new world, for this society, right? You have to be, a, you have to be employed. You're a tool to be employed. And, uh, you know, if you're young, you're not really, you don't have much function. So 
that, that's that's what we're going to see. We just covered this last week about the eugenics programs and how um, countries are looking at this to make it you know kind of hard, like a privilege, uh, to actually be born and to make it, because uh, they're not going to give you much medical care for if you're elderly or you're young or an infant. So if you make it past that, you know you get a job, then you might get some care, if you can call it care. It says here, organizations warn that colder current, colder than average winter due to global warming, I would imagine. More double think. It says we'll kill more than 26,000 people by the end of March. So, China performed 330 million abortions since 1971. So 330 million abortions have been performed in China in 40 years since it first implemented measures to limit population growth in the world's most populous nation. So they announced the structural changes to its family planning system, which oversees the controversial one-child policy. So controversial policy. So if it was really all that con controversial about killing 300 million newborns, uh, you know, the humanitarians and all that, and activists and Western quote democracies of freedom, would be all up in arms. But they don't. They support it. So, and they do. So they support it in the United States as well. And I'll get to that. Kim Kardashian pregnancy is tougher than I thought. So she said, it's, uh, it's a little painful. I've gotten sick a couple times, and that puts you out. So I saw that along with this article, too. Paltrow, Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow, I nearly died during miscarriage. So she reveals the story behind her third pregnancy. So um, I don't know if this is like engineer consent, uh, scaring women from having babies. I don't say it's a glorious thing, as in like it's no pain or anything. But uh, I just wonder if this is a turn off young people who are considering having a child. You know, maybe because they're not infertile enough. Maybe the eugenics isn't taking hold enough. Uh, maybe they're not getting enough abortions. Maybe they're not uh, wearing enough protection or contraceptives. They like to use that word protection because it's not just protection against HIV. And that it's protection against getting pregnant. So, you know, so for a lot of people nowadays in this brave new world, that's a bad thing. It's not a celebration of life. It's a bad thing. And eventually, you know, you're going to have to go to the state to be able to procreate. We've already talked about this. And most of it will be voluntary because you want to have an Uber baby, right? China's engineering genius babies. That's right. They've collected DNA samples from 2,000 of the world's smartest people and are sequencing their entire genomes, an attempt to identify which determines human intelligence and potentially bump up every generation's intelligence by 5 to 15 IQ. And we were just talking about in Europe about uh, f uh, the economy leading to uh, increase in fascism particularly Italy and Greece and other places. Austria, a poll reveals uh, worrying views about banned Nazi party in Austria, or as Austria prepares to mark the anniversary of its annexation by Nazi Germany. An opinion poll has shown that more than half of the population think it is highly likely that the Nazis would be elected if they were readmitted as a party. A further 42% agreed with the view that life wasn't all that bad under the Nazis, and that 39% said that they thought a reoccurrence of anti-Semitic persecution was likely in Austria. The findings were contained in a poll conducted for Vienna newspaper in advance of Tuesday's 75th anniversary of Austria's Nazi annexation date, which still counts as one of the most shameful and controversial in the country's history. And it's funny, too, because it'd be like if the, if the Allies lost in World War II, it would be like Britain. Uh, it would be like Britain who, was, who basically was annexed by the United States, or the U.S. was annexed by the U.K. And then, you know, one of the countries... Let's say the UK is blamed. Oh, they they allied with. Uh, they were annexed to US and they voted for it. And the US bombed the Japanese and killed a bunch of people in experimental bombs. Ooh. But since they're the victors, you know they get the right history. Tens of thousands of Austrians gave Hitler and his troops a rapturous uh, welcome when they invaded the country unopposed in March 1938. Austria fought World War II as part of uh, Nazi Germany, and many Austrians helped run the death camps says yet for decades post-war Austria frequently perpetuated the myth that it was a victim of Nazi oppression. The poll also showed 61% of Austrian adults want to see a strong man in charge of government and 54% said they thought it would be likely or highly likely that the Nazis would win seats if they were allowed to take part in the election. 61% said they believe that enough has been done to reappraise or repraise Austria's Nazi past. The official yes vote for annexation was announced as 99% and Austria was finally absorbed into the German Reich. And then you have this uh, Greek soccer player banned for life for a Nazi salute. So uh, he claimed ignorance. He didn't know what it meant, uh, but it said they, he celebrated it in controversial fashion. 
The official Olympic salute stopped being popular, popularly used after World War II due to strongly resembling the Heil Hitler salute. So there you go, there's the Olympic salute, which actually goes back to the Roman salute. Or the American Bellamy salute that schoolchildren did with the Pledge of Allegiance back in 1942. Thank you.